Hello, everyone. This is Doug, the host of the Autism Stories podcast. I definitely don't consider myself much of an artist, but I have interviewed some incredible ones. These artists share their insights from learning to paint a tree to opening their own exhibits. In any places where the audio may be hard to hear, we'll provide a transcript below. I hope you enjoy hearing about their artistic process, and hopefully it will inspire you to create something too. I read that you like to paint the people you sell your art to. Why is that important to you? I just always know that I always like to make them happy if they were viewing it. And I just look at pictures and figure out which one to use. Logos and founders of companies. Now, I saw a great picture of you and Ringo Starr. Not only was it the two of you, but Ringo was holding up a painting you made of the Beatles. He liked it. His manager connected with us. I even know that after the lady that knows Ringo, a friend, I got to meet another person who even knows Ringo, but the musician. For, for those that may not be familiar with what sensory gated art is, what exactly is this type of art? So it's a new genre. I didn't start painting with the plans or intentions to invent a new genre. I simply painted what came naturally to me, what I felt was the meaningful things to capture in a piece of art. And I was looking for other art that it compared to just so that I knew kind of where I stood in the art world itself. And that's when I realized as I searched and searched and searched, searched this is a totally new genre. When I finish the acrylic painting of the piece, that's when I will add the texture afterwards. And usually by that point in the painting, when all the acrylic base is done, I'll look at the piece and that's when I guess you could say it just, it speaks to me. I know my mind kind of sends me to like, that's where I want to see texture. That's where I want to see texture. And then it ends up mapping a really harmonious pattern. I had not heard too much about sensory guides in exhibits like this before. So how do you see this guide as being helpful to people when they do go to the exhibit? We, uh, we developed this because we recognize that many people with sensory differences find it hard to navigate public spaces. And so a sensory guide is like a mobility guide. You know, in, mo in a mobility guide, it shows you where the lifts are, the ramps, and the facilities are available. So this is the same thing. A sensory guide is very useful to prepare people for what to expect and to bring them through the exhibition with minimal sensory disturbance so that they can enjoy the exhibition or installation without extraneous hindrances to overcome. So what would you say that you hope people get out of this exhibit or just for that matter, any art that you do? Well, my work is very sensory. I experience and respond to the world very directly from my senses. As I'm speaking to you or when I write, it is actually a translation. So my words are not directly from my experience. My work um, expresses the rich and abundant ecology that is outside of word and expression. We want to validate our autistic sensory communication as a, a real, valuable, and important communication style. And yeah, just to allow the autistic embodiment to guide others into this wonderful dimension. In preparing to talk with you, I learned that you have several interests that have very little to do with the spoken word. And one of them is painting with watercolors. How did you go about learning this skill? I was inspired to try painting after visiting the San Diego Museum of Art. I was so excited looking at all the paintings and wondering if I could perhaps paint myself. I was thrilled 
when I asked my mother if I could try it, and she got out some watercolor paints and paper. I was new at it and unable to even hold the paintbrush properly. I was unable to move my arm to apply the paint, but mom gave me the support, the tactile input I needed. The same support she gave me when I was learning to point to letters on the letter board when I was learning to type. The same support she gave me when I attempted to learn piano and dance. My first painting was of a tree. Mom thought it showed enough artistry to continue. Eventually, I taught myself how to daub on the paint with a minimal tactile input to battle the apraxia. We took some of my paintings to a watercolor class at an art museum, and the teacher encouraged me to continue. She felt I had a unique painting style and a strong artistic voice. I was so happy. So over the years, I have continued to explore new methods and paints. I love painting so much. I hope to keep it up my whole life through. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep learning from Autistic Voices.